The Wall Street Journal uh, had a regional bank forecast saying, among other things, regional banks face years of trouble. You agree with that or disagree? I disagree. When I try looking at the events that have transpired, in my mind, just take a very simplistic approach. How much of what we're dealing with is cyclical and how much of what we're dealing with is structural? When I think of the cyclical issues with regard to the inverted curve, I think to the cyclical issues associated with whether or not we're going into a recession, what the severity of that may actually look like. And then I try to look at some of the structural issues that may be having long-term implications on what's going on from a, a banking perspective. Structurally, the too big to fail and what that does to us and our ability to gather deposits is definitely something we should look at. But more from a, a broader perspective, the speed of money today and the movement of that money in relation to the speed of information is something that all banks are going to need to look at, not just the regional banks. Your bank is healthy. Uh, you, your deposit base is stable. It is diversified. Uh, it, it, it's, it's in good shape. And your loan reserves are not skyrocketing or anything like that. So why are so many people so worried? Not about you uh, and your bank, but about regional banks. I think it's just natural, once again, going to some of the cyclical issues. I think you look at an inverted curve, and my biggest competition today isn't the bank next door. It's the federal government offering five. 550 on treasury rates, and that's where a lot of deposits move to. Now, that's just cyclical in nature. When the curve goes back to a more normalized slope, those deposits will come back on balance sheet. I think, once again, the concern about what happens going into a recession, a lot of commercial real estate fears, I think those are issues that are definitely impacting valuations when it comes to regional banks today. I mean, if you look at the, the forward earnings on regional banks, we're only trading at nine times forward, forward earnings today. The S&P is trading at 18 times forward earnings. You go back five years ago, we were sitting right on top of each other. So I think there is a lot of consternation right now with regard to regional banks in general. But once again, I believe those are just really cyclical issues. Ira, I've been excited to talk to you because when I looked through the list of bidders for SVB, there popped up Valley Bank. Tell us uh, as much as you can about that. Where it, was it a, a pricing issue? Did you know they want someone bigger? You know, you lost. I mean, would you look at other uh, other assets uh, if they come available down the road? Yeah, I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for organizations like ours. You know, we've been around for 96 years. We've never had a losing quarter. We've a diversified portfolio, as Tyler was mentioning. Our average deposit's only $58,000, around 625,000 individual clients. So we have a wonderful franchise. And I think as we think about what's happening in the space today, if there are banks that are going to be troubled as they continue to move through this, I think Valley and other peers like us have a tremendous opportunity to increase franchise value and to increase what our value proposition looks like. So as I mentioned before, we were definitely a bidder on SVB. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, uh, but I think it was a wonderful exercise for all of us. But I have to wonder why you would want it. I mean, I understand at some price, but maybe even if that price is zero, you take over a bank that's kind of underwater, right? And made a bunch of uh, mortgages at, you know, I don't know, one and a half, two, three percent, has a bunch of securities that are still problematic, even if you kind of move them, you know, I don't know if you move them back into hold to, you know, explain to me how you would have created value out of an uh, economic franchise that appeared to not have any. I think at the time, a lot of focus and concern was on liquidity across many of banks to, and I think our bid, uh, wasn't a very traditional bid. It was an it was an all bid, so it included every single asset. But we had partnered with a lot of other firms uh, to take many of the assets that we weren't very comfortable with. And I think we do certain things very very well, and sticking within that footing is very important to us. So as we looked at the SVB bid, uh, we were only taking the assets we were very comfortable with uh, that we had on our portfolio. So it was a much smaller size, I think, than what the entire book looked like. Uh, we had partnered with some tremendous firms to really take down the rest of the assets then we would have been left with a tremendous amount of liquidity. And I think as we look at our clients and our ability to really put that money back into place uh, in the markets that we operate, it would have been a tremendous, tremendous win for, for everyone.